You get to wear the suit. Well, it's sort of like a big red body condom. Yeah, but yeah, sure. But <laughs> Call it a suit, whatever you want. But Josh, like that. It's really you that, like... Hey, you... hey, hey! <laughs> I'm really in the suit, okay? I'm sorry. You can, like, put the suit on, sort of, like, like... It's just, Wiggle like, a team it. of people that get that thing on. Like and a... I'm always, like, so terrified I'll, like, throw up in the mask or something, you know? I have all these weird... Uh, oh, yes. Sneeze. There's Do you a lot sneeze of... in the mask? I have you all did. the time. You have sneeze I have one of those, like, that. scratches that you just... Yeah, down. no, nothing. There's nothing that can... There's no space in that thing at all. When I put it on, I can actually taste my own genitals. It's disgusting. It's just like... Do they roll you in talc or something? Uh, I do. Yes. That's just that's just when I get home from my Love wife. The smell of lavender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was talking about it. It seems like you're quite enjoying the press tour. You're having a nice time. Yeah, you know, you, if you're going to jump in the water, you may as well swim. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah. So uh, there's a nice picture fun. of you in Rome enjoying it. Yep. Oh, there back. we are. Aww. There we are. Oh boy. Yeah, I could feel lovely. Josh falling deeper and deeper there. <laughs> your honeymoon picture. It really is. Like, it looks sort of like CGI in the background. Like, we didn't, we weren't actually outside. <laughs> yeah, we weren't actually in the <laughs> yeah, no. Well, like, this morning, I mean, I, I told him this this morning. I wrote a text to him last night, and I said, you know, I've really had a good time. Like, these things cannot be so fun, and then sometimes they can be fun. And I you said... Don't, you don't have no, to I, I am gonna it. Talk. was a love letter. It was a love letter. <laughs> a love letter. <laughs> it was a very intimate love we letter that I felt really forth, good yeah. about not only how it was written, but the heart behind it. Yep. And then this morning, I went down to the gym, and the first person I see, the only person I see in the gym is him. And you want to do nothing but avoid the person yeah. that you wrote the text yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, we both barely made eye contact. Barely. <laughs> Very awkward. But you, you had feelings for Ryan before you met Ryan. Are you telling me this, or is this something? That... <laughs> you, something you said. You said it. In... No, I have said it. I saw the proposal, and I have no shame yeah. in saying that even though I saw it alone all three times, <laughs> that I was a fan. Wow. I am a fan. I just can't you know, not wrap my head around you That's sitting not... and watching the proposal. Yeah. No, like, not at all. Look at, yeah, right. look at that. Yeah. Look at that. I can see you watching and just being like, fuck this guy. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I felt that when I saw Green Lantern. OK, yes, yes. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. I know you did. There is this kind of funny club now. There's a kind of elite group of people who have all worn the outfit. So did you reach out to any of them? You know, I didn't reach out to any of them. I, I have talked to many of them since. I had a really interesting encounter. I was uh, buying my kids one Tuesday afternoon. We went to a, a costume shop, a Halloween shop. There was nobody in the place. The woman proprietor didn't recognize me or didn't care at all. That I, was <laughs> that. I was in there with my kids, and I heard this voice say, Oi, is that, is that you, Ben Affleck? Is that you here? I looked around. That's my British accent. <laughs> Very good. Right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I looked around, and I saw Christian Bale. And the first thing I thought was, Christian Bale is British? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he's such a good actor. I thought, I really was like, and, he's, and, um, and he was very friendly. He was buying, he was there with his kid buying uh, Halloween costumes, too. And apparently she didn't recognize him either. <laughs> and, this is uh, quite the store. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, it was this Los Angeles costume shop. And he was... Very generous and kind. He's a wonderful guy, and he said, you know, make sure they put a zipper in that suit. I did three movies with no zipper in my uh, outfit. <laughs> so he gave me some very practical advice. And, um, did you take that advice? I did take that advice, and as it turned, proved quite useful. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, he was very, very kind to me and very sweet, and I appreciated it, because it, it would have felt awful if I thought, you know, that he was going around going, can you believe that they put in that Batman? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and I, I ended up running into Michael Keaton, and... Uh, and I talked to Clooney briefly, whose advice was unrepeatable. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, what was so his advice? It's just a string of epithets. <laughs> That's George. OK. <laughs> like when, you were, yeah. when you were the penguin, yeah. uh, you worked uh, there were well, a lot of animals. Penguin is kind of a, well, I guess the bird. Yeah. He's an animal. Yeah, but you, it's obviously a lot of penguins. But the, so a lot of penguins. But there was the monkey as well. You had to work with the monkey. Yeah, that was horrifying. <laughs> that was a horrifying experience. We had a little spider monkey and... Uh, you know, I had the suit on and I had all the gear. You know, pick, that. Pick, there, well, there you I, are. There you are. Oh yeah. yeah, that was exactly the set where we, where the monkey was coming to deliver a note to the penguin uh, from Batman, and uh, Tim Burton, this wonderful guy, he goes, uh, you know, look, and I'm, I'm just like in this big suit with the beak and the whole. McGill with the hands, the flipper hands, <laughs> and he says, uh, "I'm going to show you what the what's going to happen now." Uh, we got the stunt people doing this. 
the trainers, the trainers. I said, okay, fine, let's see. So the monkey's up on a high staircase, and there's one trainer up there, and there's one trainer down below, and they click something or call the monkey. And the monkey comes down. He's got the note in his hand that he's supposed to deliver to the penguin. And he goes and he gives it to the guy. And he says, oh, fine, that's cool. And Tim says, you know, Tim, he goes, okay, is that good? Is that fine? I said, yes, really, well, let's do it. So they put the monkey back up there. And now I'm all, I put this uh, uh, mouthwash, kind of black, dark green mouthwash in my mouth so that when I talked, they, you know, and they, they grunt the penguin stuff. It would just kind of ooze out, you know, and drip down. And I go over to the staircase. They roll the cameras. They let the monkey go up top. And I walk up to the edge and I go, <laughs> waiting for the monkey. The monkey comes down, takes one look at me, and leaps at my ball. <laughs> It was like horrifying. Because it, was, it was slow motion, baby. I mean, I saw. <laughs> and he grabbed the hold. Now, thank God, I'm in this, this suit that is like full of all these padding and shit. He grabbed the hold of the, the, the right in right in here. I, he took a big, big mouthful. <laughs> Everybody went crazy, you know, cut, cut, cut. They run all over. And the monkey is attached. The guy comes over, the trainer comes over, pulling the monkey off, rips the monkey off of my leg. I did not feel a thing, thank God. Like this far away, and I probably wouldn't be telling this story right now. On Silence of the Lambs, is it true that did you never speak to Anthony Hopkins? No, never spoke to him. He was scary. I mean, the first day we had a reading, we had like a little read through and we, I got there early and then I went to the bathroom and I came back, everybody was sitting down, we did the read through of the, of the film. And by the end of it, I never wanted to talk to him again. I was <laughs> petrified. Um, and so then we did the whole movie. He was always behind those, the glass partitions or he was in his cell and because the scenes were so long, they'd kind of lock him in at the beginning of the day and he'd go there and then the next day he'd be on the other side and I'd be and I'd be on this side and we got to the end of the movie and it really had never had a conversation but you never passed backstage in a car no or... I avoided him <laughs> <laughs> as much as I could uh, I really avoided him and then uh, I was eating a tuna fish sandwich it was the last day and he came up to me and he I guess he was sidled up to me and I said I, I don't know, I sort of had a tear in my eye. I was like, I'm, I was really scared of you. And he said, I was scared of you. <laughs> I think it's funny because why would anyone be scared of me? I don't so, know. So when you were filming the, the yeah. scene, you know, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do that again? <laughs> when you were filming the scenes yes. when he was behind the partition, well, they were reset cameras. You just sat there. Well, yeah, because they were. He was screwed in. You couldn't. I couldn't get to him. He was behind the glass. Did he stare at you? Um, <laughs> sometimes he did. <laughs> did you have to audition for Bond? Uh, yeah, I had to do a full day screen test. Well, it was supposed to be a full day, and halfway through the day, I went sod this. I'm not doing any more. Walked off. But I mean, that was. Uh, well, I mean, I'd sort of done enough. One of the things you have to do is you have to do a scene from from Russia with love. Uh, you know the scene. Well, he comes in, I, I don't even remember, he comes to the room and uh, Tatiana, whatever her name is, lying naked in bed and there's a sort of scene about, you know, like, is that your gun? No, oh, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then they're filming it from behind. Um, so I, I, I did that and then I had to take my shirt off for some reason, but I'm not quite sure what that. that about. <laughs> <laughs> was that the end of the day? Yeah, was. <laughs> yeah. so, um... Did you have to do stunt, did you have to do a forward roll and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did he really make you think? Handstand. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Abby, were you intimidated joining? Because these guys are very established in the Bond franchise. Yeah, and I hear horrible things about them, and I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't you uh, did you sort of have a, a moment on your first day? Yeah, my first day of shooting was the scene with the, the both of scene? them. Yeah, on the yeah. Oh no! In the, in the, yeah, yeah. Don't give too much away. No. no, no, no. <laughs> But basically, they were both looking at me, judging, saying the line. Sneering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I realized that he was Judy and Daniel looking at me very like, very like that, and then I realized it was M and James Bond looking at me, and I was in a, in a crystal cell, 
and I realized that it was the Bond villain. I was doing a James Bond movie. Yeah. And then all my lines went off. And Sam, which he kind of knew, came to me and laughing and said, what happened? So I just realized I'm the Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start to try to get into the thing again. And I was doing this scene, and then I hear pam pa pam 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 pa pam 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 I go, what is that? And that was Judy's, oh, that was Judy's cell phone. Cell phone. <laughs> So the story is basically Spider-Man trying to take a break. He's trying to put, hang up the Spider-Man suit and escape the responsibility of being a superhero. But what he learns throughout the course of the film is that that responsibility isn't something you can run away from. Um, and that's when we team up and we sort of become best buds on and off screen. Um, <laughs> These <laughs> elemental creatures. Is... But now, filming together, like Jake, mm. uh, Tom, it sounds like was quite unsympathetic to you while you were filming. When, when, didn't you get a little, a little peaky in? Oh well, uh, yeah, we were shooting a well, uh, we were shooting a scene, and yeah. I, I, uh, I got, a, I got, I, I got sick. I, I, I was very nauseous throughout the day, and and in the middle of the t one of the takes, I, I, th I threw up. In the middle of the take, and uh, kept going, you know. But that's how—that's what acting's all about. <laughs> I was no. sitting opposite him, and I was, I was like, "How is he doing that? He is so good. He looks so tortured and so unwell, and so, <laughs> and so like, like hurt." And then he basically just had a stomach bug. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they actually CGI'd the vomit out of the shot. But if you look in the movie, in the movie and there's, my mouth is just partially open at one. I'm kidding. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I was right there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my God. That's the Marvel Universe. <laughs> just painting out the vomit. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. chunk. But my <laughs> eyes were so expressive that they had to keep it in the movie. That so they good. couldn't redo the shot. So you, know? <laughs> you must, Chris, uh, very quickly mention Thor. Uh, mostly so we can show this picture. Sure. Oh. Um, <laughs> Why would you be embarrassed? Oh, Look, God. It just looks like a lot of dieting and exercise <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, thanks. No. <laughs> but also, now apparently, is this true that people, this is odd, so people come up to you and they want you to tell a specific joke. Oh, they just come and tell me Thor jokes. Oh, I so they see. Yell Thor lines oh, and stuff. okay. Like, so, um. It, yeah, go. Uh, do you know the, the joke about um, the Thor spends a night with this woman and the next morning he says, I have to tell you who I am. You know, I'm Thor. She says, you're Thor, I can hardly walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good joke! It's a good joke, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, it's good the first time, <laughs> the next 27 times. You know? Apparently, you originally, originally auditioned... And no offence is meant by my incredulity here. That's right. But you originally auditioned for Thor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Did you encourage yes, did. him to do that, Ken? Uh, it, was a, it was a very uh, sort of um, brilliant kind of uh, pitch for the part. I mean, he'd come in and, and wowed the room um, we, uh, for, as Loki and, and as Thor. We were, it, we were an emerging and evolving script, so it was always changing. But fair play to Tom, he just uh, went for it. In and, the end, um, Ken, why, why did you go with this, then, in the end? <laughs> <laughs> uh, was was uh, it the longer very... hair? Was it? <laughs> I think it was the hair. I think it was really the... That's was... my brother from another mother. <laughs> yeah, Mark yes. Hamill, you had the granddaddy. You had, I mean, one of the biggest secrets in cinema history. Right. Uh, the Darth Vader when you're on it. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Kids are just on episode two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Um, but, so how long did you have to keep that secret? Well, the contrast was when we did Star Wars, nobody cared. You know, I read it and I, I, I gave it to my friend to read. I said that this is the goofiest thing I've ever read. <laughs> and then he called and he said, you're right, it is goofy. Uh, can I give it to Meredith? I said, sure. I passed it all around. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cared. By the second film, that's when the scrutiny became more intense. Yeah. And there was a wonderful uh, substitute uh, uh, revelation in that scene the way we filmed it, Vader said, you don't know the truth. Obi-Wan killed your father. And the idea of Alec Guinness being the, the real villain, I thought, wow, what a spectacular twist. And it's just as you see in the film, no, search your feelings, you know it's true. Wallop, the hand goes off. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
but <laughs> so vivid. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Uh, the director, Irvin Kershner, uh, took me aside. He came to my dressing room, actually, and he said, uh, I'm going to tell you something. I know it. George Lucas knows it. And when I tell you, you'll know it. But if it leaks, we'll know it was you. <laughs> so I said, what, what? And he handed me the piece of paper that said, I am your father. I was shocked. I said, is, is, that, is that true? He said, well, you search your feelings and we're going to play it like Dad is. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, Dad Vader. <laughs> uh, and then I was paranoid because I thought, uh, you know, uh, it was way before social media and all of that, but yeah. I had to keep it the secret for about a year and a half. I didn't tell Carrie. I didn't tell, well, you know, telephone, telegraph, tell a Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> She had no vault whatsoever. In fact, Harris and I would test her. If you really wanted to get something out fast, you'd ask Carrie to keep it in your confidence. Yeah. And go. <laughs> so at the screening, when that happened, Harrison turned to me and said, Hey, kid, you didn't fucking tell me that. <laughs> I apologize for the F-bomb. I only used it for historical accuracy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I was so thrilled because, I mean, I don't like having the, the burden of that. I talk in my sleep, you know. It could be really dangerous. Does Harrison like your impression of him? <laughs> no, actually, he once said to me, Hey, I don't sound anything like that. <laughs> it's very accurate. <laughs> Because when, when it, you were approached into, you weren't so sure. Because you were known as the Austrian Oak at that stage. Yeah, that's you? right, yeah. Uh, you weren't sure you wanted to act with the Austrian Oak. What, number one? Yeah, number one. Yeah, not, not at all. Um, <laughs> only because I was a snotty New York actress, you know. <laughs> you move from New York, you're training with, you know, Lee Strasberg and... You know, you can't go to L.A., it'll ruin you. You can't do L.A. movies, they suck. I mean, New York, New York is tough. So here's Arnold um, starring in this film, and my people were very excited, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going <laughs> to see for myself. But I actually went to set to see him. Um, you once never told me that story. I know. <laughs> Not told anybody else. Um, so you were hesitating working with me? I was. Oh, you believe that? But no, but history is a great thing. History is a lovely thing. But it also, it, it's quite a complicated thing because you were married to James Cameron. So when the three of you got back together again, was it the same as then or was it more difficult? Was it less difficult? What was uh -huh. it like? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like I mean, that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how it can be more difficult than in the first movie. <laughs> yeah, it, was a, it was already very difficult then. Yeah. Uh, but the, the first movie, let's not forget, was a small movie. It was a small budget movie. It was kind of an independent movie with six and a half million dollars. We had to go out and do certain shots in Hollywood without the permits. We didn't even have oh, permits. I remember sure. one time I, I got out of the car and he says, go across this, uh, this, this street here in Sunset and go over to this car and punch the window in, in the front and hit that <laughs> shot. And we didn't even own that car. <laughs> it was like no, a random true. car. So I walked across the street, you know, kind of like Terminator last <laughs> like, and then boom, boom, boom. And then I looked around, boom, punched through the window. You know, and, and reached inside, and uh, so. Uh, that, and then the cops came. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> now, here's the thing, though, because because the guys are talking about this movie Logan, which is part of the X Men I've franchise. I've never heard of it. To tell you. <laughs> <laughs> How come you're not in it? Yeah. Do you know? I think when you get to my age, you want to leave aside those tired old franchises. <laughs> <laughs> you know, move on to something fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to I tell sometimes you. cry myself to sleep. <laughs> I, I, I simply don't know how I don't... I, I, I don't know why I'm not in it, darling. <laughs> um, when could you not, I remember Could you not this. do another one? Leave <laughs> <laughs> this, this one out. <laughs> how you died. And as I... <laughs> But Professor X, you did die in one of the movies. Oh yeah, I was vaporized. But by he's Gene resurrected. Ray. <laughs> yeah, but that's nothing. It's only it was only at the level of DNA that he was vaporized. I mean, of course they oh, can come back together. I see. Good. Come on. Yeah, right. yeah. I remember. Can I just say because I wanted to say thank you to you all these years. I'm sure I have. I hope I have. 
I was very nervous on that first film. I started three weeks in. It was my oh, yeah. first movie, and uh, there was a lot going on, and there was a lot of people. And I remember you pulling me aside and saying, this at times is going to feel uncomfortable, it's going to feel overwhelming, but you're in good hands and everything's going to be OK. And you, both of you, were such heroes of mine. I was a little starstruck, but you... It was the first day I met you. And you saying that to me, I never, ever forgot it. I don't so think I was in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd seen you at the National Theatre in a musical. What, yeah. what was it? It was oh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, what a beautiful morning. You know, I love. took your dressing room straight after you. Did you? I took a photo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I leave anything behind. Yeah. <laughs> nice had I, had <laughs> I known it was you, I would have done. <laughs> Very saucy show. It certainly is. <laughs> Laurie Strode. I mean, her story could have gone in any direction, mm. but how it affected her is really extreme. Well, it's gone the way the trauma will take you. You know, October thirty first, nineteen seventy eight. She was young and filled with promise and excitement, a romantic um, a dreamer. And then October 31st happened, Michael Myers showed up, and the next day she went back to school a changed person because by then she was a freak and she was just the person that survived him and she got no help. So you see a woman who's carried trauma for 40 years. It cost her her family, cost her her marriages, cost her her child because she knows he's going to come back and obviously... Uh, that's what happens on October 31st, yeah. 2018. And you are ready for him. I mean, she is fully weaponized at this point in her life. Well, she is traumatized and weaponized. It but, is a combo platter. But then you did have to... I would have thought for some other movie you'd have had to do weapons training, but for this one, you, you went and shot real guns. I did, and the first day I went in for my ballistics training, there was a guy named Ray in Charleston wearing basically a Halloween sweatshirt who was obsessed with Halloween and they didn't tell him I was coming in. And of course there was a moment <laughs> where he turned around and he was completely overcome. And then what happened was he wanted me to shoot his laser disc. So they took the Michael Myers face, put it all the way down the gun range. Yeah. And for my first shot with this Winchester, which is a live round, it's a big, heavy gun. Clunk, clunk, boom. And do you have a picture of it? No, do we have a, oh, do we have a picture of it? Do you? <laughs> I, there is a picture that exists. Oh, did I'm sorry. It, did you give it I, to us? No, I thought maybe they would have looked it up on my Instagram site. <laughs> I mentioned that it was on there. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll say, uh, yes, we do, here it is. And then tomorrow night on telly, it'll magically be there. OK, so... <laughs> watch this, watch, watch this. this. Watch yeah. this. So, there I was, Winchester in hand, boom, boom, live round, boom. Wow, and I think we've got the picture. Do you have a picture of it? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Pretty good. Right between the eyes, that Michael Myers. Yeah, got it. I could see that. Yes. Yes. I could see that. <laughs> Ray was very, very happy. I bet he was. Listen, we've got a. Isn't show business fun? <laughs>